Greetings everybody, I'm Janine Bertwistle from the Rotary Club of Guernsey and I'm the Peace Building and Conflict Prevention Specialist for Rotary in Great Britain and Ireland. I'd like to talk to you today about how you can maximise the impact and sustainability of your projects, whatever they are, whether they're local, international, whether they're small, whether they're large, whatever the area of focus. As Rotarians, the Rotary International Vision Statement is about what we are doing, because together we see a world where people unite and take action to create lasting change across the globe, in our communities and in ourselves. As a humanitarian service organisation, I believe that peace is actually the cornerstone of our mission, is by creating environments where peace can happen. I believe peace starts with each of us, whether it's in our own heads, in our own thinking. There's conflict in our lives every day. It could be at home, at work, among our friends, or even in Rotary. It's not necessarily about the wars. It's not about the systemic level of violence or conflict between ethnic, religious or political groups. In fact, luckily, the majority of conflict doesn't result in violence at all. Paul Harris, our founder, highlighted that the road to war is well paved. The road to peace is a wilderness. Together, delivering our service projects effectively, sustainably and positively, we can tame that wilderness, wherever it is. Our current president, Jennifer Jones, asks us to imagine Rotary. She asks us to be kind to each other, to commit ourselves to equity, human rights and fairly allocating community resources. She asks us to consider if it is being fair to all concerned. All of this is about peace. From our own islands, Gordon McAnally, he highlights that peace is so much. Peace is freedom. Peace is healthy children and adults, clean water, sufficient food, education, human rights, dignity, clothing, housing and concern for mankind. Basically, all that we do in our Rotary service, whatever the area of focus, wherever it is, whatever it is, However small or large, we are creating hope in the world. We are bringing peace to our world. So what is positive peace? What is negative peace? Well, I'm not here today to talk to you about the theory of peace, but we do need to realise that positive peace is about the attitudes, institutions and structures that create and sustain peaceful societies. Negative peace is the absence of violence or the fear of violence. It isn't enough to simply have a country which lacks violence and says it's truly peaceful. To be in a state of peace, we need certain good things to happen. What we are all doing in our service projects, in our clubs, it's all about bringing together things that make a difference to improve the quality of life for people in our communities, whether that's individuals, groups or the entire community. If we want Rotary to be seen to be relevant today, meeting today's needs wherever we are, we need to make sure that we are looking at the four key elements of the Rotary Action Plan, that we are increasing the impact of all that we do, that we are reaching more people both within Rotary and within our communities, and that we are able to enhance the participant engagement, whatever it is, we need to be getting more people involved and engaged with us. And we must be seen to be flexible, able to adapt to the changing circumstances. For instance, the last three years have brought to all of us, wherever we are in the world. We need to be seen as the go-to place to volunteer with, network with, and ultimately to join as a member. Rotary has been ahead of the curve of peace in so many ways in our 118 years of history. And we absolutely have to continue to be so. Our areas of focus, tie in so well with the eight positive pillars of peace from the Institute of Economics and Peace and also to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, which are for the entire world. They're not just for the developing country. Many of these goals in our own backyards, we are falling short. Rotary can make a difference. I like to say, in Rotary's words, we are creating environments where peace can happen. And if we can use the tools from the Institute of Economics and Peace to maximise the impact and sustainability of your project, why wouldn't you? It's really simple to use. It's not complicated, I promise you. In the Institute of Economics and Peace, 
they are a strategic partner for Rotary International. They use the term that the optimum environment for human potential to flourish. Isn't that what we want for our families, our communities, for the future generations? We are uh, in a unique position as Rotarians because we are at the heart of our communities. We are trusted by the people on the street, by organisations. We have got the voice, we have got the ear of all sorts of people, and we are people of action. And to do all of that and to truly hear and to truly be relevant, engaging, we have to make sure that our projects are also sustainable and meeting real community needs. And one of the ways of doing that is to look at those eight positive pillars of peace that every one of our areas of focus contributes to a more peaceful world. And we are continually supporting those eight positive pillars of peace. Strange words there. Well-functioning government, sound business environment, low levels of corruption and more. What on earth do they all mean? One thing I want to say is that positive peace really is about better performance on ecological sustainability, improved well-being, better business outcomes. A philosopher of science you may or may not have heard of, Cole Popper, back in 1966, he said that some problems work like clocks, mechanical, they're finite, they're predictable, they're controllable, whilst others are like clouds, they're infinite, they're ever-changing, unpredictable, hard to control. And I think that what we have to deal with as Rotarians are cloud problems. But what we can do is to look at how it all relates together. Let's look at how we can apply clock-like fixes to cloud-like problems. And that's what it's all about. As we increase our impact, expand our reach, enhance participant engagement and increase our ability to adapt. So let's look at these and how they might apply in your basic service projects, no matter how small, how large, local or international. So what does well-functioning government mean? Well, it could be that you're involving your local community leaders in the project to ensure that you get community engagement. Perhaps you invite local stakeholders to form a committee to oversee your project. Perhaps you make sure that the language barriers that may be there are overcome, that you've got mechanisms for tracking attendance or extracurricular activities related to a schooling project or that you are making sure that how you operate as a club how you operate your projects you know that you are working smartly effectively in a well-functioning way and that doesn't necessarily mean with a government whether that's local or national or even international. A sound business environment. Well, we know that community economic development is indeed one of our areas of focus, but is that what it might mean? Maybe. Perhaps it's that when you're doing a vocational training team or, or offering vocational skills in your community, you're making sure that not only are you teaching them those skills, but you're also helping them to have the basic understanding that they need for around running their own business successfully in compliance with whatever the laws are and so that they can actually make a living and grow. Maybe it's about making sure that you use local labour, local expertise, so that you're helping to support your local economy. Don't forget, as Rotarians, across our clubs, across our group, across our districts, we have so many different skills that we can offer to help ensure that our projects add to a sound business environment. Low levels of corruption. Well, that's not relevant here in Great Britain and Ireland, is it? Hmm. Well, having previously been in the finance industry and had to deal with the introduction of the anti-bribery legislation, that whether it's a small amount of money, whether it's a, a gift of something, there is corruption all over the world. It just means different things in different parts of that world. Perhaps it's around the bullying that goes on. What could you do about it? Well, simply be transparent. Make sure that there's clarity around roles and responsibilities, that you've got that good governance that I talked to earlier around budgets and, and things, things that are in the project. You know, do you know what happens to the equipment that you're using? What is happening to it on a longer term basis? Who does it belong to when you walk away from that project? Perhaps it's around 
giving a sense of ownership to the people that are involved in the project so that they don't want to steal the books to take them home because they haven't got any other access to it because you're actually sharing things equitably and I'll talk to that in a moment maybe it's just around the accountability lots of things that we could be applying on our projects whatever they are high levels of human capital what on earth does that mean basically it's about people bringing together all parties impacted by involved with or could add resources their expertise to your projects maybe it's about creating a knowledge sharing club using peer-to-peer -peer learning maybe that could encourage both the the participants in the program and those running a program or running a project i'm i'm currently working on a peace initiative here in guernsey and it's very much around participant engagement and ownership and that will help to have a longer term more sustainable impact so how can you increase engagement in your project what are the barriers for people being involved perhaps it could be as simple as not affording to be able to get the bus to get to your project or not having the clothes to fit in whatever it is make sure that you stop and think what is actually going to stop people being involved in this project whether it's as part of a project team whether it's as participants whether it's the community that's part of the the whole impact of it and free flow of information really does stem from that. In this day and age, we have access to so much information or we have access to so much misinformation. It really is important to ensure that your project and the free flow of information around it is actually getting the right information to the right people at the right time. Have you considered that if you're producing a leaflet about something, can everybody read? Do you need to be thinking about a literacy project? Or do you need to be thinking about whatever project you're doing, making it accessible in different ways? How are you using your local media, whether that's traditional or, or online? How can you engage them? How can they help you with that free flow of information? And don't forget, it's not just about the project outcome. Make sure that as the project goes along, right from the beginning, to the end and the evaluation of what you've done and how you could improve it going forward. Ensure that you give regular updates to all parties. And by keeping all the parties updated, it also helps with the good relationships with neighbours. It's between different parts of the community. How many different cultures, how many different languages, how many different communities have we got right here on our own doorsteps? What about new people coming to the community? What about people like Ukrainian guests, refugees, people that have been made homeless, people that have had to move from one part of the country to another because they can't afford to live where they were before? Make sure that you've got good relations with your neighbours and it links back to making sure you involve your community leaders and your community neighbours so that you can improve the relationships between them as well. Are we distributing the resources equitably? Are we making sure that, for instance, period poverty, that is a major issue here in our islands. Are you doing something to make sure that that isn't impacting on your local community? And it's not just about school children. It's about the entire reproductive cycle, the reproductive life that we go through as men and women of whatever gender, whatever your sexual identity, are we being fair to all concerned? It's about ensuring that people are able to meet their humanitarian needs. What impact has the cost of living crisis had on people in your community? When you're looking at food banks, is that really the only solution? What about empowering people, enabling people to grow their own food? They don't have to have their own garden. Perhaps they could grow something in a container in their own home, community allotments, environmental projects. There's so many things that we could be doing to ensure that there's equitable distribution of resources. One of the ones I think is so relevant to what we do in, in Rotary and our unique position, having this good relationship across our networks from the people that are homeless on the streets right through to the governments of the world. It's about the acceptance of rights of others. Is there gender equity in your project? Is there inclusivity of it? And actually, when you get people involved, when you get them talking to each other, 
when you get them going beyond the initial barriers that they believe means they can't engage with someone else or another part of the community, when you actually get them talking, and the eight positive pillars of peace is a fantastic way of helping you to do that, you really do identify that there are many more similarities than differences. By identifying those, it's much easier to communicate and negotiate peacefully. And for your projects, whatever they are, to have a much longer term, sustainable and impactful outcome. I would be very pleased to help you to understand how it could be applied to your specific project. There is also a very good online programme. Takes up to about four hours, I guess, but you can pop in and out of it as much as you want. You could go back to it as much as you want. You could redo it as much as you want. It's the Rotary Positive Peace Academy. That's much more about the theory of it. I would be very, very pleased to help you to bring it to life for your project. So please reach out to me. Let's see how we can together maximise the impact of your projects by using the eight positive pillars of peace. Thank you.